So today I'm going to string the Wilson Blade Team. Um, great racket for control and the person who I'm stringing it for wants it set up for control. Um, they're also pretty keen to keep it colour coded. Um, so we've got the green and the blacks. I'll be putting a black uh, Wilson stencil on there as well, just so it's pretty mean. Um, the method I'm going to be using on this, I'm using the Selenko Hyper G 1.20. Uh, the method I'm going to be using is a one piece, so I normally string with a two piece method, um, ensuring that the crosses go from top uh, down, so from head to throat. Um, I'm still going to do crosses head to throat on this, but I'm going to use a modified around the world um, pattern, um, the UK RSA one, um, which I think will lend itself really well to this. It'll minimise the amount of looping we have on the outside of the racket as well, on the outside of the frame. Um, but it'll also mean that the only two areas where you tie off are going to be the top cross and the cross at the throat and the bottom cross at the throat. Um, so you've got no kind of um, issues with the mains being short on tension. I mean, obviously you you use the uh, the not function on the machine or you add an extra 10%, 20%, whatever you want to do when you pull the mains anyway on the two piece. So that should be fine, but this just completely alleviates it. And this method also, um, allows slightly quicker weaving of the crosses because for the majority of it you have um, the side mains missing because they get installed afterwards. So let's um, let's get cracking on this one shall we? So just use my insurance policy there, my double that starting cap. So I've already, just in the interest of um, saving everything, I've already um, done a bit of setup here with the clamps to make sure that everything's pulling right. So as you may have seen, I've pulled two through, so that would generally pull um, half the tension because you're pulling two strings at the same time. So I'm just going to pull this one through again. Now I'm just taking lots of care, releasing the clamp first. There we go. And for the avoidance of doubt, the side I'm stringing at the moment, this is the short side. Uh, reason being, um, because of the method I'm using, instead of measuring out eight lengths of string for this uh, short side, I've measured out 10 because that will allow, and you'll see a bit later on, that will allow for some additional string later on to do some of the crosses down by the throat. Again, going nice and close to the frame here. <coughs> it's important to make sure in my opinion that you never go right up to the frame uh, just because I think it, it's just a little bit kinder on the string not to kind of angle it off too much by, by the frame um, so I normally go a couple of millimeters shy of the frame um, but so this isn't an instructional video by any means you know, I'll be talking a bit about what I'm doing as I'm going through but there are others that might do things a slightly different way to me there are others who may do things totally differently to me. Um, I'd like to think I'm pretty much in the ballpark of doing things <laughs> the correct way, but you know, some people have very differing views on, on things. Um, so stringing three mains on this side, never more than three mains at a time. This one's not going to be tension. It's just come through for ease of use. Um, just looking after the frame a little bit. So very, very careful with the have that starting clamp pulling it off they are slightly rough on the inside so you want to be careful releasing the base clamp first so you just really want to be careful with the strings the whole way through here i mean poly strings are pretty tough anyway but you know it's not to not to say that you can just tear them tear them around because slight little tears abrasions notches you know that that's the kind of stuff that ends up breaking strings prematurely in an ideal world you'll have a player that consistently breaks a string in the middle of the racket or near enough the middle of the racket just from hitting good shots consistently. But like I said, not an instructional video, just showing you a method of how I do things. Also, another little tip, which I always do, or generally always do anyway, when I've got lots of strings, such as this one on the long side, um, what I tend to do is just keep hold of one end of it in, in one of my hands, just so I'm not having to play around for it afterwards. So 
So I'm making sure here, so I've got three on each side. So I'm making sure that I never really go more than the, more than a couple of mains ahead of the next one. So I'm gonna do, I've got three mains tensioned on the short side. I have five tensioned on the long side. And then I'm gonna do another four on the, uh, on, the, on the short side, so I'm two ahead on that side. So it's um, just a case of keeping an eye on it, because the thing with stringing is that it can be quite hypnotizing sometimes. It can put you in a bit of a trance, and when you get in that zone, when you get in that groove, you sometimes just forget to do the simple things. Well, certainly I do anyway. So this string, which I'm putting in now, Again, I'm not going to be tensioning this string. This is just going to be coming through. Just for ease of use next time. See, so for this one. So I've now got an even five on each side. So I'm gonna do another couple on here. I'll probably do three actually. So if I do three, I'll show you why in a minute. Well, let's just go a couple. Another little tip as well. I mean, some people when they receive a new racket that they've never strung before which doesn't have strings in it um, quite often it can be difficult for less experienced stringers to find out which um, of the hole which of the grommets to string through easy rule of thumb is if things look consistent on here you haven't got strings going off at wildly different angles then generally speaking, you're in the right kind of ballpark, really. Another thing you can do is just find, simply find a photo on the internet of the racket strung and just take a, a quick view of it just to make sure you're not going completely mad. I mean, the, the more rackets you do, the more rackets you, you get used to the general patterns. And the good thing with tennis, largely speaking, the majority of the patterns are very, very um, similar. So what I'm going to do on this side, um, so actually I shouldn't have even needed to put that one through there. What I'm going to do on this side is I'm just going to tension, I'm going to clamp it rather here and I'll show you why in a minute because this is the last main that I'm going to put it on this side. But I'm going to clamp it off around here because I need some more space because of the string pattern. This particular one here, I'm just going to retension it quickly. Take that off, and I'm gonna put the starting clamp on. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be needing this particular um, side for a while now. I'm not gonna be doing anything with uh, the short side for a little while now. What I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna start weaving the crosses. So I'm skipping the first, uh, or the, sorry, the top cross here. I'm going straight down to the second cross. And I'm going to just weave it across. So as I said, you always um, start on the long side, crosses, second cross down. You have to forgive me, I've got a bit of hay fever at the moment. It's, springtime or approaching springtime in the UK right now and I start to suffer from hay fever as soon as the flowers start coming out and this is the reason why I left you'll see in a minute a little bit of a gap in between the, the last one just carefully getting that string through always being careful with the string so this is why I left a bit of a gap here ideally I want to leave a gap for three strings so I'm just going to tension Top one. So again, second cross down. I'm leaving the top one for 
proper. And hopefully what you'll be noticing is me being pretty careful with the, with the strings as well. Um, really important, especially at the top where you've got lots of string to feed through. Really important to look after the strings. Um, the strings, what you don't want to happen is you don't want them to get damaged at all and end up with a completely crinkled, horrible looking string down, down the bottom end of the racket, down by, down by the throat. You want the string to be consistent and to be well looked after and managed the whole way through. So always keeping an eye on any potential crimps just here. Okay, so I've um, done the majority of the crosses now, uh, as you'll see. Now I'm still using the long side piece of string um, and I'm gonna pull this one through here. And I'm gonna tension this one off in a minute. Now there's one more cross string, which I'm not gonna string through now. There's one more cross, um, cross available, which I could string through before you get to the final main uh, grommet, which is here. But I'm not going to string that final cross. What? Uh, sorry, that final cross before the main. I'm just going to pull tension here. Leave a little bit of a gap, and I'll show you why. So in total, there will be one, two, three. So there's going to be three more crosses left to do, which I'm not going to do with the long side. So always on the long side piece here. What you're going to be doing is you're going to bring that string through the last main and it's where it gets a little bit fiddly because now instead of weaving through crosses you're actually weaving through the <laughs> sorry weaving through mains you're weaving through the, through the crosses so this gets a little bit more let's try and show you how I'm doing it here but, Key is not to worry about it looking fancy uh, when you're weaving these things through because it just gets a bit tight in there. Oops, mind the post. So this is the last time, apart from doing the final cross, this is the, one of the last times I'm going to be using the long side on here. at the moment I'm not actually going to um, do a great deal with this string apart from just weave it through the top cross just getting ready for that so um, we'll leave that be as it is at the moment what I'm going to be doing now is just putting some more tension on the short side, so back to the short side, remove the clamp, remove the pad, tear the clamp off, reapply it, and we're now going to come down and do the final main on the short side. So this is quite a good technique to use in, in tennis um, and in squash, purely um, for the fact that it reduces the amount of main strings which could be left open to not having full tension pulled on them or consistent tension. 
it's a really good one for that very reason. Before I do anything, so some people what they do is they'll, they'll clamp this one off first of all before pulling this through, so they'll clamp it off here. Personally, I just like to clamp it off now, get things out of the way. There's quite a lot of string left over on here. I just use a set of Sunenko rather than cutting off a reel, so there's a fair bit of string left over. What I'll do is I'll knot this at the end, so I'll re tension it again at the end. And not it, so I'm not going to add any extra kind of weight on there at all. So now we're coming to the final crosses. So I've got uh, three, uh, yeah, three crosses left to do now, just with the remaining bit of the short side. So I'm making sure I'm not going to be crimping any string up. So this is where you do start to get a little bit more traffic with the strings. It's never going to be a fast or easy job and Hyper G isn't always the smoothest string to pass through because it's a little bit angular. But it's not too bad. So this isn't necessarily the quickest method to string a tennis racket, um, but it's not that slow. I mean, the, the crosses are relatively comfortable, but because you're using a one piece and you've got more string to pull through on the long side, it's always going to be a little bit of a longer process than doing a two piece anyway. So as you see at the moment, I'm not pulling, I'm not going one ahead with the cross strings here just because I've measured out the string on the short side fairly fairly well so that it's not leaving enough to, to pull through doing that way. What I'll show you at the end is the fact that you actually minimise the amount of loops on the end, um, on the tie-offs on the outside of the frame using this, this technique. It's a, it's a pretty good way of doing it. percent now because it's the, the bottom cross strictly speaking you don't really need to add any more tension it won't really make that much difference adding that extra sort of 10 percent um but the only thing i would suggest is aesthetically yeah it's a little bit more pleasing when you're pulling all the strings and seeing if they all uh, pull the same so you might want to do that just out of best practice but the reality is you're not really going to be in a position where you're unless you're a terrible player where you're constantly hitting the ball along the throat of the racket and if you're at that stage I don't think it's going to make any difference if you're losing a couple of pounds tension on here so as ever we're going to use the Parnell knot on here just try and give myself a little bit of room to move so it's fairly tight down here That's a relatively kind of wiry string as well, the Hyper G. Oops, tough if I actually got the right end. So if you're noticing why well, I've got some string attached around here, um, this is just a clamp that I use just for doing a bridge if I ever get a little bit too short on string and tying off. So this is just my bridging clamp. It's just easily available to me. Uh, one little thing I do when I clamp off, sometimes I just crimp the ends, flatten them out a little bit with the pliers, just 
it means it's, you're not going to catch yourself when you're touching it. I'll apply the same rule as I did with the bottom cross. So add an extra 10% tension to this one. But again, you, do, you don't really need to do that at all. Um, it's just, I guess, just work. One of those things really, just one of those best practice things, um, which sometimes just looks a little bit better if you do it that way. So I've got loads and loads of string left on here. As I said, I just took it straight from the packet, measured out the short side, but the long side I wasn't too bothered about. Uh, so just cut a bit of string off there, just to make life a little bit easier for myself. Um, okay, and let's find the tie off. Quite often I'll actually use the short side on, on the other side to this. Um, it doesn't matter too much. I mean, you have some rackets, like I know some of the babalats, you have to, if you can do it correctly, um, then the logo on the end of the racket up, upwards and stuff, then, you know, some rackets, yes, you do have to pick one side as your short side and one as your long side, but some racket, the other rackets, it generally doesn't matter too much really. So. This one, um, I've used the short side on the, what is normally universally known as the correct side, um, mainly because this way it means that the tie-off holes, I'm using the same tie-offs that we used on it um, when the racket was first strung uh, at, the, at the Wilson factory, or certainly when it would have been. Um, so it just looks a bit, bit neater, a bit prettier around the edges really without having lots of grizzled grommets around there. So, there we go, that's the majority of the racket now done. I'll just use my setting off all just to straighten things out a little bit. Um, always say this in my videos, but really important to get the strings nice and straight the minute you finish stringing the racket. First of all, it's easier to do it with setting off all than it is with your fingers on the sofa. Um, but secondly, you don't want to give the strings any kind of any time to notch because once they notch in place that's generally where they tend to stay where they go back to I mean you know when you, when you get a racket straight from the factory that's been stuck on the shelves or stuck in a box for two three four five months six months twelve months two years whatever um, the strings don't tend to move that much when you hit the ball until you've had that that racket for ages the strings tend to stay in place pretty well. The stencil always stays put perfectly on there. That's just because it's all had time to bed into the notches where it's been strung. So there we go. That's the racket. And I'll just show you very quickly what I mean with regards to the, the kind of loops on the outside. So as you can see here, I haven't got too much um, of a gap here. So it's, it's not much of a crossover. It's pretty neat as it goes. Um, you know, the most you might get is crossing over there, but that's, that's barely anything. No, no strings crossed, all nice and straight. And you're not having any kind of loops outside the frame which go from here to here or from here to here. So it's nice, nice and easy. Pings pretty well.